today I am doing a review of this King 7B bass trombone. Um, I am sitting out in my garage slash studio. Um, I've got a couple of spot lamps going in the corner there because it is freezing. In fact, you can probably see the steam coming or the condensation rising from my breath. Um, but anyway, I'm suffering through this for you. So anyway, I have this King 7B bass trombone here. And it is, in many aspects, a very standard bass trombone. It has two inline independent rotors. It has your usual bell size of 9.5 inches. Um, it has this the key of B flat. First trigger puts it into F. Second trigger puts it into G flat. Both together put it into the key of D. Uh, and so in many respects, it is your standard bass trombone. There are a couple of idiosyncrasies that uh, make this a King branded as opposed to something else and they are as follows. Firstly we have a curve in the brace here. Not a particularly uncommon characteristic but is something that is uh, something that King does in most of the trombones that I've experienced. And secondly we have a ring here, a finger ring. Finger rings aren't something that you see very often in bass trombones but because the slide is a lot, uh, f the two slides are a lot, f the, the two pipes, tubes of the slide are, are generally a lot further apart in bass trombones, they have uh, decided to put a finger ring here so if your finger can't reach to the top of the mouthpiece, uh, in that minute you can put it in this uh, ring here. Unfortunately, that means that you are limited in the variations you can have on your grip. I've mentioned in previous videos how I like to take my third finger and put it on the other side of this brace, but if I retain my uh, index finger in this ring, it becomes a little bit kinesthetically awkward, shall we say. Um, so you're a bit limited. One of the other interesting things about this trombone is the sheer amount of thread on this uh, join here. You can sit here to loosen it. It takes no less than half an hour to loosen this screw. Still going, there we go. It is just ridiculous. And there we go, tighten again. Um, and unfortunately because of the way that this turns um, it, and, and your hand rubs across here as you pick up and put down the instrument, uh, it tends to make it, uh, it tends to loosen it, which is not very enjoyable. Anyway, I'll reverse the instrument like this and put it in my other hand and we will see the back of the rotors, um, we'll, we'll notice that they are offset, they're not both at the same angle which may upset some people with uh, OCD but that's just an aspect of this instrument um, and the reason why they've done that is because one trigger sticks out the back, one trigger sticks on the front so it makes sense to, to rotate the valves as opposed to having additional bends in the tubing and so forth. But anyway, the reason why I wanted to rotate this instrument is to show you these linkages. These linkages are string as is characteristic of instruments of this particular age. Uh, personally, I'm not a fan of string linkages myself. I much prefer uh, the more modern alternatives, um, but uh, that is what instruments of this age generally have. It gives them a little bit more play. There isn't a defined start and stop point necessarily. Depending on how tight the string is, you can get a little bit of extra wiggle room out of there, which is a characteristic I don't really like myself. One other interesting little foible of this instrument is the trigger mechanism pivots on the side. What that means is that you've got a lot less resistance to push the trigger down on, on this end than what you do over at this end. Uh, and conversely, you've got a lot more distance to go when you push it down on this end. So if you are cursed with small dainty fingers and you can only reach to this part of the trigger, you're going to find it a much more difficult job to do than if you had more uh, and then if you had bigger hands and you could reach to the other side. That being said, even with my large hands, I still find it a little bit uncomfortable to get to the very edges of this trigger. As for the slide, um, it's quite unremarkable. It's in very good condition, it's very smooth, and despite the age of this instrument, um, I, the slide is in brilliant condition. I'm very happy with it. Uh, as for the age of this instrument, I'm not 100% sure. The instrument serial number is in the 249,000 range. 
Um, I'm sure somebody will be able to look that up. I had a 30 second Google and I couldn't find something that told me definitively. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'll give you a bit of a demonstration as to what this instrument sounds like. It's not going to be a great demonstration because unfortunately my normal bass trombone is uh, out is on loan and I'm using this $10 Chinese mouthpiece. So it's not the best, but you know, you're not going to get a great example of what this instrument can do using the microphone and a phone. So what I'll do now is a bit of a demonstration, a bit of a, a play through this instrument. Um, what I have in front of me is Bach's first cello suite and I'm going to play uh, Minuet 2 and the gig. <laughs> Sorry, running out of breath then. Uh, it is very cold here. Um, but anyway, a review, brief review of the King 7B bass trombone. Thanks for watching.